Okay, we're down here with Miss Daisy. Look at her sitting like a perfect little puppy, waiting your turn. Yeah, hi. So this is week one video recap with Daisy. Hi, Missy, where are you going? In my legs? Come over here. You're silly. Oh my God, you're stuck. Come here. We're gonna go over all of our skills that we've been practicing for this last week so you can see how they're doing. Um, I will say that in your initial confirmation email, you got a link to our video library. Check that out. Definitely watch the videos for week one. It's going to be a lot more detailed instructions in those videos so you know what to practice. With Daisy, once she gets home, I'm just going to kind of run through. I'm going to talk a little bit, but I'm just going to kind of run through the things that we've been, that we've been working on. Okay, so we're going to start, get started here. And the very first thing that we teach all of these puppies is charging the clicker. So I'm just going to click and then I'm going to offer Daisy a piece of food. We want the dogs to make the association between the sound of the click and that they should come over and get food from our hand. Yes, that's a good curl. What do I got? Yeah, you gotta wake up. All of these puppies are snoozing when I go to get them. Good girl, there we go. Okay, and then from there, you're going to teach Daisy that she should also follow the food in our hand. I'm gonna show her that I've got a piece. Yeah, what do I got? And I want her to get up. And after she takes a few steps, I'm gonna click and let her have that cookie in my hand. again. Good girl. There we go. And I'm going to wait for her to stand all the way up, take a few steps, and we're going to click that clicker, release the cookie. There we go. Good girl, Daisy. Pretty simple, but it's the foundation for her following the food in her hand for all of the other behaviors. So now I'm pretty much going to do the same thing, restore the food, but this time, Daisy, I'm going to pair her name with following the food lure. Good girl. Daisy. So we want to teach these puppies what their names are right off the bat. Also, little foundation step in a recall. Come to me when I call your name. Show her the food. Daisy. Very nice. Good girl, Daisy. So we're going to practice a few things at a time. We just did three little training exercises there. And then we're going to take a little break. And I'm going to see if Daisy wants to play a little bit. These puppies are so lazy today. Yeah, you were sleeping. You were sleeping. What is that? There you go, good girl. Oh, you got it. Where's that toy? Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Good puppy. Woo! Good job, Daisy. Here we go. We want to keep it light. We want to keep it fun. And that's why we take little play breaks in between every few training exercises. Did you just do a big stretch? Yeah, look at you. Good job, puppy. snacks let's grab our clicker so now we're gonna do a hand target you're gonna see that it might look a little similar to following the food lure like we just did but this time I'm gonna detach the food from her nose so I'm gonna move a little bit faster 
I want her to target her nose to my hand. So once she reattaches to the food, that's when I'm gonna click and release the cookie. Let me show you what that looks like. Daisy touch. Good girl. Very nice girlfriend. Do that again. Daisy touch. Perfect. So as soon as I feel her nose reattached to the food in my hand, that's when I'm clicking, that's when I'm feeding her. Daisy touch. Good job. So we did that three times in a row. This is a movement exercise, just like following the food lure, but she's got to close that gap between her nose and our hand. We can also start to use that as an informal recall exercise. So asking her to come to you with the use of the hand target. Now we're gonna work on our mat, the first step in the mat. Good puppy, look at you. And I want the puppies to come over to the mat in week one. We click when they do so for four paws on, feed them a couple cookies. Okay, release them off. This will turn into a stay type behavior. This is where we start. I'm feeding these puppies two cookies for getting on the mat. You certainly could feed them more but because we're recapping everything, there's one, there's two. I don't want them to get full, so I'm just doing two. Okay, and then releasing them off. Good girl, wanna do that one more time? Daisy, where's your mat? Good job, there it is. Perfect. Okay, there we go. So very simple in week one. We will add criteria to that skill each week. What are you doing? Got an itch? What do I have? Ooh, what is that? What is this toy? Good girl, Daisy. Hi. You want some pets? Good girl. I'm just taking a little break to get some loving, maybe some play. Good job, Daisy. What do I got? Yeah, there we go, there we go. Get it, get it, get it. You can see the difference when I play with her with the toy on the ground like this versus when I play with the flirt pole. My hand is a lot more in the picture right now. And you can kind of see like, she's a little slow in her play right now, but like right there, she did just put her mouth on my hand. Which is fine, like her, her mouth is very soft right now, right? Good girl. Sometimes as they start to get bigger though, they might get a little bit more mouthy. And the flirt pole is nice because then my hands are completely out of the picture. The puppy is learning just to target and bite the toy because your hand isn't right there with the toy, right? That's one of the reasons I like the flirt pole a lot for babies. Where is it? Oh, now you want that one? it move a lot more quickly and kind of fun for the dog. I think the other thing too is the floors down here are just super slippery so it's hard for them to get some speed to chase the toy. Where is it? Oh, now you want that one again? You're silly. This particular flirt pole is my favorite kind of flirt pole for puppies and small dogs. There is a link to it. Oh, it went over your head. There is a link to it on my products page on my website if you wanted to get one of these. They're not very expensive at all. Maybe like 20 bucks or something. Not even. Not even. Where is it? Yay. Good girl, Daisy. Oh, you got it. Okay, we're going to do just a couple more things here before we wrap up. Oh, now you got it. 
the cute tough girl. We gotta do our sits. Yeah, we gotta practice sits. Where are you going? You're crazy now. Hey, baby. You really wanna be on my legs. positions that we learn. Crumbs. Now we're going to move into some handling exercises. So let me show you what I mean by that. Basically I'm going to touch Daisy all over make sure she's comfortable with all that. Ready girlfriend? Get you over here. I'm going to show her that I have the food in my hand. I'm not going to use the clicker for this one because I need to use my other hand. I'm going to bring my hand under her belly and just stabilize her. Yes in that stand position. Okay, do that on both sides. Good girl, Daisy. Yes, I'm just bringing my hand under her belly. Okay, holding her up in the stand. Now I'm gonna move on to handling different body parts. Yes, you guys can hear. it up and rolling maybe her toes kind of through my fingers. Instead of using the clicker, I'm saying a verbal yes and then I'm releasing the cookie. Yes. It's mostly just because I want to use both my hands and I don't want to click like close to her ear or something that might be loud and scary. Yes. Picking up her tail. Good girl, Daisy. Okay. So what I'm doing with these handling exercises, I practice them just like the training exercises like our hand target and our sits and our go to your mat and all that other stuff. It's very important because this is how your dog is going to be handled by your groomer and your vet, right? They might allow us to do stuff when they're young, but don't take advantage of that. You really need to train it so that they stay um, okay with being handled that way for their entire lives. They're not just tolerating it when, when they're babies. Let's do one more thing. We are going to get her dressed in her harness. Where are you going? Don't walk in your pee. So exposing our puppies to all sorts of different novel experiences is part of the socialization process. One of those things is exposing our puppies to the different types of gear that we might put on them. In this case, it's the harness. Week one, our puppies sometimes act like they can't move with the harness on because they've just never experienced it before. So you want to spend a couple minutes with them in their harnesses, maybe tossing some cookies on the ground. Look at you, you're a good girl in your harness. Go get it. Yeah, you're not too bothered by that at all. Go get it. See it? Daisy. Put their harness on or whatever. You can also play with them with their toys a little bit. Oh, good shake. You feel it on you now? What are you doing? Don't walk in your pedal. Good girl. Oh, yes, you're wearing your harness. You're okay. confirmation email there is also a link to book your zoom lesson if you click on that link right now it looks like I do not have any availability that should open up in the next couple of weeks so keep an eye on that and I will probably also make an announcement once it is open oh, what is that good 
Good girl. So that way you can get your Zoom lessons booked for when they go home. Get that toy. Nice girl. She's not too bothered by her currents at all. Okay, Daisy. Oh, you found a crown. So again, also make sure that you watch um, the videos in the video library for week one. And we'll see you next week.